yeah, dropping pitches. I mean, uh, th there's lots of different types of cricket pitches that can be installed now. Um, dropping pitches being one of them. Uh, and the technology has been around for oh, for 20 plus years. Um, and it's, it's proven technology. Um, I think fundamentally it was originally designed to um, be used in multi-sport stadiums, um, specifically Australia, which is obviously why the guys from the Adelaide Oval have been brought in to, to build these pitches. Um, and if you can imagine uh, Australian rules football being played in a in a cricket stadium, uh, the cricket pitches obviously are in the middle of the ground, made of a different clay compared to the rest of the field. Uh, and so the drop-in pitch scenario was designed around lifting out the cricket pitches and replacing it with a natural turf um, that could be used for, I'm going to say, Australian rules football uh, or other multi-sport venues uh, or other sports. Um, effectively, what, what it is, um, they're in metal trays. The pitches are grown in metal trays. Um, tend to, they tend to be sort of 24 metre long, 3 metre wide uh, and around 200 mm deep. Um, filled with obviously clay loam. Uh, and then the grass is grown into that into that profile. Um, yeah, it's proven technology, and you know it, it has been proven to over a period of time to be a really good and consistent surface. Um, so that that's sort of the fundamental principle of them: that the grass is grown away from the stadium, um, and then the, the obviously when the time is right, the the pitches are lifted by crane. Um, and then transported into the stadium and dropped into place. So you can imagine the sort of the, the, the infrastructure needed to deliver that is quite substantial. Uh, and obviously there's a, there's a significant cost to doing that. Um, so yeah, it has to be balanced by the amount of revenue that's going to be generated from the other sports to, to warrant that sort of technology. And obviously the, um, the stadium in New York, uh, it's a new ground that obviously post World Cup is not going to be used for cricket. Um, so it was uh, decided that that's the best sort of technology to be used in this particular instance. Um, and and it's, uh, I think the drop-in pitches are, are the same as any other grass pitch. You know, they need preparation, they need time to settle uh, if they're newly constructed. Um, and you know they play. You know they are. They can be a little bit uh, up and down at times, as can a natural pitch. To be fair, uh, as we're seeing in other parts of the West Indies at the moment. Um, certainly, I think the pitch that England played Scotland on last night uh, was a little bit un uneven. Um, and yeah, it, 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 in cricket, that that happens. Yeah, I think fundamentally, whatever pitch you come across as a professional cricketer, you've got to be able to adapt your game to suit it. Um, and obviously, with when, when the pitches haven't been played on and they don't have a track record, um, you need to assess those conditions very, very quickly um, and um, respond accordingly as a player. Um, so whether that's as a bowler, you know, bowling different lines, different lengths, on a specific surface or as a batsman you know maybe certain shots aren't, aren't played because of the the type of pitch that you're playing on so it, it's about adapting and i think the teams that are going to be successful on these pitches are the ones that, that can adapt more quickly than the opposition um, and adjust their games accordingly um, so you know it can be challenging um, hopefully you know as time goes by the pitches will become more consistent as they become more settled um, and you know there's a long way to go in the tournament so there's uh, there's lots of opportunity for uh, for people to adapt to the conditions and, um, uh, and hopefully play some decent cricket uh, and score runs and take wickets no, I think I, I think that the longer pitches are in the ground, the more they settle down. The more pitch preparation is taken place on the pitches, the, the flatter uh, and more consistent they will get. Um, and I, I, I think that that's going to happen over the next few weeks with the pitches that have been put in at the, the various stadiums. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think there's a massive issue with you know the pitches being dangerous. Um, they just lack a little bit of consistency at the moment. And I think you know that that will improve in time. Just to clarify, the drop-in pitches aren't artificial pitches. They are fully natural pitches. It's a fully natural profile with clay soil and natural turf grown into uh, natural plant, grass plants grown into it. So it is a fully natural surface. Um, 
Is it the way to go? I think it, it all depends on, on budgets available and, and the cost, because um, I think that can be a prohibitive factor. Uh, the pitches um, give you play, but they don't give you additional play. And, and I think this is where maybe the hybrid cricket pitch technology could potentially help. Um, obviously, when there's a natural grass surface there, we can inject um, the polyethylene fibres into it to give it reinforcement and stability, and, and basically you can get more play out of those pitches. Um, we are actually looking at Loughborough University, which is where we do our, um, our research and development. They've actually got three drop-in pitches on site, uh, and we're potentially looking to do a, a bit of work on there uh, this coming uh, off-season where we're going to potentially stitch one of those pitches with hybrid technology just to see how it performs because um, we haven't ever stitched a, a drop-in pitch uh, and maybe there's a combination to be done um, with, with the drop-in pitch technology along with it being a hybrid surface. Um, you know, the other thing to look at is obviously in, installing more grass cricket squares uh, around, around New York which are there then permanently. Um, uh, and as long as there's not more sports being played across those pitches, then, then the, having a natural service in there 12 months of the year will obviously be, be beneficial uh, and even more beneficial depending on the amount of play if you stitch it with hybrid technology as well. Um, so, you know, I, th I think dropping pitches have got their place, uh, especially around multi-sports stadiums, but it has to be balanced out with, with the cost of installation, the infrastructure needed to lift the pitches in and out, uh, and at the end of the day, they still need maintenance. Um, they still need a good maintenance regime uh, in place to, to keep the pitches consistent. Um, but I think that when you compare that to a natural pitch that's been stitched with hybrid technology, um, you don't get any extended play on a drop-in pitch currently. Um, and that's where I think the hybrid technology maybe will win over a drop-in pitch, a pure drop-in pitch. Um, in, in the majority of circumstances would be my view. Uh, you, you get pitches that are more difficult to play on than others, um, which affects the score ultimately um, when, when you're batting. Uh, and it's been proven, you know, you can, you can defend a low score. Um, you know, that's been proven numerous times historically. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, the best team will win the game. Um, the best team that performs on the day will win the game. Um, so again, just I don't like repeating myself, but going back, you know, if you adjust to the circumstances and the conditions quicker than the opposition uh, and adapt your game accordingly, you've got more chance of being successful. Um, so I think you know, whatever the score is, whether it's chasing 250 or chasing 85, that can be equally as challenging. Uh, and I've got experience of that, having played for a side that you know, if we're chasing 300 or if we're chasing 100 in a one-day game, it was always seen that we would always make a game of it. So we, you know, we'd chase 300 and get there probably, and we chase 100 and nearly fail. You know, it will, it would be a, a bit like that. So uh, I think the way that uh, the game is is, uh, you know, the best team will win, but it's adapting to those different conditions and obviously traveling around the different venues. Every team is going to come across different circumstances and uh, you know, they have to be able to adapt to that to you know, make it, I think, through the competition.